Hello all, my name's John, this is 3D Comic Creator. So, this is another one of these, uh, what am I reading this week? Last week I was over at DC and uh, reviewing the Green Lantern, this time I'm back at Marvel. I want to talk about this New Mutants, and this is one of the, in my opinion, one of the better comics of the, uh, the whole new X-Men relaunch. Mostly because I really love the New Mutants. Or I should say part of it is not every issue features these characters that I love. But anyway, I want to talk about this one. I really like the art. This is some good stuff. His name is Rod Reese, I think, or it might be pronounced Rice. But this is some incredible stuff. And it's really dynamic, really colorful, and it, it's kind of a joy to look at. So I do always look forward to it. And, of course, uh, this is one that Hickman is writing himself. And so, uh, sometimes, you know, it can be hit or miss. But I really enjoyed this. And I think that Hickman, he's kind of responsible for a resurgence of the, uh, the Sunspot character. I think he was kind of mishandled after Claremont uh, left the New Mutants and left him in the hands of other writers. And it just got to the point where he was kind of one note. People just kept saying, oh, he's arrogant, the DaCosta arrogance. And that was, that was his thing. He would be arrogant and silly. And Hickman kind of goes in on that too. However, he does remember that, you know, Roberto is a worldly person. He's a businessman. If you guys didn't read Avengers when he was an Avenger, he was the guy who figured out, hey, why don't I just buy AIM or AIM or whatever he pronounced it, those terrorists with the, the yellow bucket heads. He said, why don't I just buy these guys? And he neutralized the entire problem. And even Captain America was like, we should have thought of that. But um, anyway, back to this, this series. So they went out into space essentially to find uh, some uh, cannonball. Sunspot wanted to hook back up with Sam. Uh, again, if you read that Avenger, Sam married uh, one of the Imperial Guard. She's a uh, smasher, I believe. So he's out in space in the Shi'ar Empire with her. Or is it Shi'ar? Shi'ar. I don't know. Anyway, they went to go hook up with him. They got into trouble as usual. So where we are in this beginning of this episode or of this issue, there's kind of a humorous recap where Sunspot kind of starts saying, like, this is where we are, this is what's happening. I start to realize right away, I didn't see any of this stuff. You know, did I miss an issue? What is going on? Well, it turns out that they're kind of skipping ahead. They kind of use this humorous recap to skip ahead and actually not tell us a lot of the story. They, they kind of show little bits and pieces, like, okay, this is what would have happened. And, you know, I don't know if I like that that much. I was enjoying this story. They could have, you know, done the whole issue as far as I'm concerned. They didn't have to skip over it. As a matter of fact, they wasted some of the issues with characters that I really don't like back on Earth. And they could have just done the whole original crew as far as I'm concerned. And another thing that went on here that was kind of weird is that Sunspot seemed to have a thing for Deathbird. And if you remember Deathbird, you know, she's, she's a villain, usually... And um, the funny thing is, back in the day, in the you know in the old days, which I'm in my late 40s, so I remember the old days. But um, Deathbird, when when you drew a bad guy, they were ugly, man. <laughs> Deathbird looked horrible. She looked really like someone you didn't want to be around. And I think it was Cockrum mostly, Dave Cockrum, who was drawing her, and he drew an ugly, ugly person. And the same thing when he was drawing Rogue, when Rogue was a bad guy. I mean, she was ugly. When she was uh, terrorizing Dazzler in Dazzler's comic, Rogue was ugly, man. But then suddenly, when she joined the X-Men, you know, she she became better looking. <laughs> and I think Chris Claremont said something to, uh, was it Dave Cockrum? Was somebody, maybe even Paul Smith, like, hey, she was supposed to be a lot younger. They drew her a lot older. But anyway, the point is, Deathbird is now uh, drawn attractive looking, and Roberto really likes her. <sighs> Miracles never cease. <laughs> anyway, then it kind of goes into 
gladiator who's actually running the whole empire now. You know, he took over a while ago. And um, so he's with the, the new empress, the, 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 uh, the up-and-coming empress who uh, needs to be trained how to rule. And I always like seeing Gladiator. I tend to buy things that Gladiator is in. The first time I saw him was in an old issue of Fantastic Four, which, uh, uh, 249, I believe. And, man, I don't even like the Fantastic Four, which I said in one of my videos. But I just never liked those mofos. And I see this cover of the Fantastic Four getting their butts kicked. And I thought, I got to see this because this guy's beating up the Fantastic Four. So I bought it. And um, I bought the uh, the next issue, too, 250, where uh, Spider-Man and Captain America had to come in, essentially help the FF avoid getting their butts kicked by Gladiator. Anyway, it's like I didn't even know who he was. And then I had to go back and read some of those old X-Men where he showed up and, and kicked their butts, too. But anyway, really good stuff. They also had... Um, Hickman put in a lot of his uh, his real world science stuff in there, and you can you can really get a lot of this education from his writing, which I don't know. I, I appreciate some of it. Some of it I don't appreciate. It. I think I've said before where Hickman, I just don't know if these comics are what he should be doing because I just feel like a lot of this deserves to be in in prose. I don't know if comics is the place for all this exposition. I mean, look at these text pages. I'm not really buying these comics for pages full of text. It's just, uh, you know, you could have put more of that great looking artwork in here and more panels of some punching or stuff blowing up. That's the stuff I want to see in these comics. I don't want to read a bunch of text. Anyway, um, <laughs> I think that, uh, man, Hickman, he should really go over and write the Flash or something, man. I'd like to see some Green Lantern or Flash written by him. I think he belongs over there. But back to this one, back to this story. We have a, a few more outliers. There's Rain Sinclair, uh, Wolfsbane, acting weird. Just, I don't know if he knew what to do with her, but she's kind of iffy because she's had a lot of dramatic character swings over the years. If you If you started reading her when I did, right when she first showed up, I mean, she was a shrinking violet. Then, you know, she grew and grew and grew under Claremont and really good. And then once you know, again, these characters, Claremont had to give up on them. And other people didn't quite have the nuance of these characters. So they were kind of reduced to one note. But Rain was kind of different because she kind of went over the whole gamut. And probably the worst, craziest of all was when she was teaching at the uh, school in the new X-Men Academy X years, which I love that book, except Rain was just, I'm like, wow, is she out of character or is something up with her? You just don't know. And now she seems to be kind of sort of back to where she was. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> What's more important is that I just don't think we got enough Danny Moonstar in this one. Danny Moonstar is like my favorite. I mean, I've been rolling with Danny since like day one. And... She just had so much to go through, and she was just such a badass. And I remember when the decimation happened, and Emma Frost is kicking out all the mutants who lost their power. She's like, get out of here, Dan Danny, you're fired, you're out of here. And it's like, are you kidding me? I'd rather have a depowered Danny Moonstar than a powered-up Emma Frost any day. But, you know, apparently they didn't feel the same way. So, uh, <laughs> I feel like Danny's kind of a... Uh, den mother to these guys but but uh I, i'm hoping we see a lot more with her anyway where we kind of end up is everybody leaves to go back home except for bobby who hangs out with sam and he buys sam's and his wife's you know their their building and it was kind of interesting to me because i don't understand the mechanism of how the economics of that would work. So sure, he's he's a billionaire on Earth, but does that matter out there? You know, in the Shire Empire, do they give a crap about Earth currency? I, I don't know. It's like is he is he still rich out there? But apparently, he had a he had a space lawyer who helped him get out of trouble earlier in the series, 
So clearly, somehow Earth money or something we have is worth something. I don't know. It it worked out, bottom line. But what I'm not sure of, I don't know if this is the end for these characters. I think if they're going back to the other characters, uh, and by other characters I mean like characters like Armor and uh, Glob, <laughs> Glob Herman, and characters like that, I, I you know, I'm out. I don't really care for those characters too much. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention here was uh, Bobby was talking about the do-nothing Generation Xers because Chamber and Mondo came along for some reason. I don't know. And they had like a little Generation X powwow where they kind of were ripping on the New Mutants and saying how they didn't trust them, like something's up with Cypher. Hey, Cypher's weird or something. You know, it's like, well, this is a guy who understands all these languages. You know, maybe he understands things that you don't, and it, it may seem weird. And and then Bobby called them the do nothing Gen Xers. So they didn't really do anything. Now that I think about it, and uh, it just it was kind of weird that they seemed to have this opinion of the New Mutants. And I could see any one of uh, the Generation X, actually any one of the X Men, any one of the heroes on Earth being afraid of magic. I mean, she's scary. Ileana is just very, very scary, and um, I, I have no problem feeling like someone wants, would want to avoid her or would think she's sketchy. But uh, aside from that, it was kind of a surprising note. Still, um, overall, this story was great. That's why I just, I don't want it to end. I want to see more space shenanigans, and especially since Bobby seems to want to stick around for Deathbird. I mean, okay, if you say so. But, uh, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't get it, but, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. This is, this is pretty good. And um, if Hickman decides to go further with this, I would love to see more Imperial Guard, more space, space uh, Super Guardian action, and Bobby could get in there too. Which brings me to another thing, just how strong is Bobby? I know he can be very strong when there's a lot of stars, when there's a lot of solar radiation around. But to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against Gladiator, I mean, Colossus could barely hang in there. You know, he beat up the Fantastic Four, which I guess isn't saying much because they kind of suck. But, um, yeah, he was kind of in there holding his own. I guess Sam took him down one time, too, by making him not believe in himself. But I'm, I'm, I'm rambling now. <laughs> the bottom line is New Mutants, this, this first arc was good. I don't know where it's going to go. It's, it's like a breath of fresh air because the rest of the X books are fairly dark and I just don't know uh, how much of that you can take you got to have something lighthearted and because um, it's it sure ain't X-Force that's for sure you know don't don't read X-Force unless you want to be depressed and um, see your heroes a acting like horrible horrible awful people but uh, this new mutants this is the way you do it so if you haven't checked it out get back in there check it out um, aside from that, let me know what you guys are reading, what you thought of this one. I'm, uh, you know, I'm going to see what's, what's coming out next week. I was going to review the Wolverine that came out, but, you know, I, I was tired of the dark stuff. So I thought I'd do something. I, I don't want to review something that I don't like. This is something I did. Like, even if I do have reservations or have complaints, I'm really only going to talk about stuff that I did like. So I will let this go for now. And uh, you guys can uh, let me know what you think. Let me know if you'd like to see something or you recommend something. I'll be here to take a look at it. Anyway, uh, I'll check out for now. I will catch up with you guys later on.